G'day, my name's Gordon Dedman and I'm the founder of Bushcraft Survival Australia. In this series we're going to be looking at various aspects of Australian bushcraft, survival and outdoor bush skills. In today's episode we're going to be having a look at how to erect and set up an Australian army hoochie. Before erecting any kind of shelter, be it natural or man-made, we first need to select a decent area. The first thing I've done is I've selected two trees that are approximately the right distance apart for my needs. I've looked up to make sure there's no deadfall that's going to come crashing down on me during the night. I've looked all around to make sure we haven't set it, we're not going to set up our shelter on a game trail or on an ant's nest or there's not going to be runoff running down towards us in any way. But above all, I've made sure that I've found an area that is nice and flat and it's relatively clear. If it's not clear, I would simply um, clear that area. And if it satisfies those requirements, we're good to go. Upon selecting a suitable site, I place my pack at the base of a tree. Now, I keep my tarp or my hoochie in the top of my pack. That way, when there's driving rain, I can get to it very quickly to get it out. I know exactly where it is. So if possible, that's where you should keep your shelters. Now, the Australian Army has been using hoochies for many, many years. I've been in the Army for almost 20 years and we've been using them for as long as I've been in. There are a few different kinds of, of hoochie and variations around the world. The uh, British Army has its British Army basher. The um, uh, American forces use a, use a poncho, but they're all variations of the same thing. The new ones are uh, in, or the Australian Army ones are in uh, uh, OSCAM or DPCU, Dis Disruptive Pattern Camouflage Uniform. The old ones used to be straight green. They've now got the new ones out, which are uh, OSCAM in a multi-cam pattern. This one I've modified slightly um, to how we set them up in the Army. And, but this method I'm going to show you I think is a brilliant method. It's, um, I'm not going to reinvent the wheel. A lot of these ideas I've gotten from courses I've done at uh, Woodlaw, Ramey's uh, Woodlaw School, as well as Paul Kirtley's Frontier Bushcraft School in the UK. They are great. They, show, they use Australian Army hoochies in their lessons and they use a method of setting them up which is really excellent. So I'm going to just regurgitate those, uh, that method because it really works very, very well. So now we're ready to set up our hoochie. This is nice and neatly rolled up and this is how I want to get it when I finish and it's time to pack up. So undoing this thicker cord, which is, uh, it's a little thicker than paracord, but it's um, quite robust and it actually makes it nice and easy to tie knots. So I'm just undoing those rolls. And then that rolls out nicely like that. These are all tied neatly. I've got my guy ropes on all ready to go and they're neatly um, bundled up. Always good to have your equipment tied neatly and ordered so that you could actually set this up in the dark if you needed to be. So it's um, really good to have yourself neat and ordered at all times. So I take one of my cords here over to this tree and all we need is uh, three different knots that we're going to use to erect this shelter. Now with one end of our cord we put it around our tree and we're going to use what's known as a Siberian hitch. Just a little tail is all we need and keeping the two cords parallel I then hold my left hand flat like that and I wrap around my fingers once. We should have three parallel lines of cord. I then point my fingers to the ground like that, then up the other side I point them to the air. That's created a loop. I now take a bite with the running end which is being held in my right hand through that loop, pinching it with those two fingers, and I pull that loop through. And that has created a hitch, 
and I just simply slide that up to the tree. And that is a quick release knot. All I have to do is pull on that end and that will come undone very quickly. Very secure, very strong. That's a Siberian hitch. The second, the second knot I need to tie is what we call the tarp taut hitch. And that Once again, down. I pull the free end around the other tree, trying to keep that rope or line as parallel to the ground as possible. It then comes under one side the cord and over the top and from there I'm going to pull back on that cord in the opposite way. I then walk around the tree keeping that tension till I get to the other side. I throw the rope over the top so it forms a triangle here. Keeping that tension there I, I put a bite keeping nice close circles a bite from under through that loop forming another bite here then putting another bite through the loop we just made I tie that off and that is nice a nice taut ridge line once again for quick release, all I have to do is pull on that and that'll come straight undone. Once we've got our ridge line nice and tight and straight, we can then open up our hoochie, which this cord is already looped through the top loops on the hoochie. Now to each end of our hoochie I've got a what's called a prussic loop tied which is just a loop which is tied to the cord which allows me to get tension at either end that way that's not going to slide back so how we tie that prussic knot is we get a small bit of cordage this is a little bit big but for demonstration purposes we then tie both ends together and we can use that using a fisherman's knot or a reef knot. I'm going to use a reef knot in this example. So simply right over left then left over right. Forming a reef knot and a loop. Then holding the knot I loop the knot through twice. So that's over the top like that looping the knot through once and around again through the middle and then pulling that back and this forms a prussic and all I need to do is pull on that let's tie it slide all the bits together and we should have four nicely spaced and even bands the loop here needs to look need to dress the knot correctly so that it works correctly all knots need to be dressed correctly and the beauty of this knot is that without any tension i can slide that nut knot up and down but as soon as i put pressure on it in an oblique angle it locks on itself and it won't move it is beautiful this is used for climbing it's a good climbing knot very effective knot as soon as i release the tension that slides again and that's all i've done here the difference is i've made that knot I would then undo that end and tie that onto our, um, our loop we've got here. So I actually created that knot that way, then undid it and then just retied it to this. And that's how that works. So I can now slide my tarp back to get, to get it uh, slack and pull that knot up using the knot to get as, as tense as I would like it and therefore that's going to help with our watershed so it sheds the water beautifully very simplistic idea it works really really well so that's the prussic knot now once we've got our tarp set up at the height we want with the tension that we want we can then set out our guy lines all my guy lines are tied up neatly in hanks they're connected to the tarp using uh, bow lines 
and they're tied up in neat four meter hanks. Now ideally you want to side it so you can get to four trees in the right places. Generally we want a tree wherever when we pull this out we want the corner to be pointing the tree that we want to use. But if you don't have a tree we just simply make some tent pegs and that's what bushcraft is all about. It's about improvising and making the tools that you need. But I have a tree that's in the right place so I'm going to utilize that. Now it's very important that you have all this neatly packed up so when the next morning or the, the night when you need to use it again everything's in order so that you can easily find your equipment. So I'm aiming at the tension here I want the corner of the tarp to point to the tree that I'm going to use. Therefore, we're going to have the correct tension that we need. So in order to uh, tie that off, we're going to use a knot called the adjustable knot. This knot's fantastic because it's just simply a prussic knot so we can loosen the knot to give it slack and we can hold it and tighten it once again. Exactly the same because it is in effect a prussic knot. Any extra we can just tie into a hank. Now the tree's quite close in this instance so um, we've got a lot of left over which can make it harder to tie the knot when you've got too much of a tail but you can't always plan where your trees are. always good to have a tidy cam. Nice and organized, nice and neat. So this is how we tie the adjustable knot. We put our cord around whatever it is we're tying it around, either the tree or our uh, stake, and the cord goes over the top. Once you're over the top, we hold that in place with our left hand or whatever hand you choose to. I put my hand through this hole, throw the cord over the top. That's once through the hole, throw the cord over the top twice. Third time I come under and I grab the cord so it comes up and over the hole we've just created. See how we've made a nice neat hole? Keep a nice small circle and I place that prussic or that bite through there. And once again, we've formed a prussic knot just like we did on our main line. And I can just slide that knot up That'll give us as much tension as we want, or I just simply hold the knot, slide it to loosen it, and take it off. I simply pull on the trailing end, and that comes down without even forming any knots very easily. Once again, cord goes over the top, hand through the middle, over the top once, hand through the middle, over the top twice, underneath the third time, coming under, forming a little triangle depending the shape changes depending on what you're tying it around small circle make a bite push it back through that loop and pulling the loop up towards the tarp I slide that so dress it off so we've got nice three nice little lines nice and neat must be nice and neat and then all I do is hold the knot and pull on the cord and that we pull until we get the tightness that we want and that's our adjustable knot you'll use that knot once you learn it all the time for everything. It really is a wonderful knot.
So there's our finished tarp. I've used some trees and I've used stakes as well. Ideally, we want the, uh, the core guy lines going out in the same direction the ends of the tarp are pointing. That way it aids in keeping it nice and taut and good for runoff. But in a hurry, if you had a tree at a different angle, you would just use that. And you notice I've actually got this side a little bit lower. That's okay, because that allows water to trail down that end and run off that lower end. So whether on either side, you can have one end that's slightly lower. That just aids in helping getting that water to run down. So now we're set up for the night. We have a roof over our heads. All we need to worry about is getting our sleeping gear out and we can have a good night's sleep. Well, it started to get a bit chilly, so I've stuck on a warmer coat. It's in the middle of winter here on the mid-north coast of um, New South Wales. And the last few nights have been quite cool. It's actually um, got down to two or three at night. So um, the kit that I like to sleep out in when I'm camping is uh, my sleeping bag. In this case is a snug pack Kestrel, which is rated down to uh, a comfort of zero. I have a Highlander three quarter sleeping mat, inflatable sleeping mat. And I've got a British Army uh, bivy bag to keep me dry. And this is all I, I use in uh, temperatures down to, down to zero. Keeps me uh, nice and warm um, when I'm sleeping out under a tarp. So uh, we'll put that together and, and have a look at that. Well, I've taken our uh, sleeping gear out of the uh, stuff sacks. I have my three quarter sleeping mat inside the bivy. On top of that, I have our sleeping bag. So that's housed that in a nice uh, waterproof shell. I could actually have that and sleep out in the open without the tarp at all. It works really well. Uh, the sleeping mat stops, prevents heat loss from conduction for the cold ground. Very, very important. And our sleeping bag is just on top of that. So sleeping mat on inside the bivy and then the sleeping bag goes over the top of that and that stops us rolling off it. Really good combination, works really well. Now, for a pillow, all we need to do is roll up some clothes and just stick them on the end, or we could use our pack, that's all you need. Nice and simple. Now, anyone that hasn't slept under a tarp or a hoochie before, you're really missing out. It is really something wonderful. It brings us closer to nature in a way that you can't, you don't get from sleeping in a tent. Tents are great when it's windy or when there's loads of mosquitoes about or when up in, up in high country. But if, you, um, if you're trying to stay out of the wind or there's not windy and you're able to, sleeping under a tarp brings you so much closer to nature. It really is wonderful and you're missing out if you haven't tried it. It's low enough that it's going to shed, um, you're not going to get wet. If you're worried about rain, the higher you are, you're more chance of getting rain in, but at this height you're not going to. If you're in the forest and you've selected your camp correctly, you're not going to get rain anyway because the trees themselves will stop the rain coming in sideways. And if it's coming in sideways, you've probably selected the wrong tamp and you, you, know, you probably want a tent in those instances. But generally speaking, you won't get wet under a tarp if you've got it set up correctly in the right area and at the right height for the weather conditions, but it is really, really lovely. I could have a fire out here and I'm set for the night. It's a very, very comfortable way of camping. And this is the way I camp all the time. I don't really use tents. In Northern Australia, I'll use a mosquito dome because the mosquitoes are absolutely crazy. But um, I'll also use a, a, an Australian Army mozzie net under this. And I might do an episode on how we can figure that because that's a lovely way to camp. I like to be out in nature as much as I can. And of course, if you don't have any of this stuff, you have to make it um, in nature. And we've looked at episodes on how to make natural shelters. So sleeping in a bivy is, and in a tarp underneath a uh, hutchie or a tarp is a wonderful thing. And I really encourage you to do so if you haven't tried it. Now, when it comes time to packing up, we pack up in exactly the opposite way that we, um, we, we uh, pack, pack, set the thing up. We Take our guy lines down first from the ends, rolling them up into neat hanks and wrapping them so they're re ready for us next time we need to use it. We pull our tarp into the centre and we fold and roll that up very, very tightly. And the last thing we do are our guy lines on the trees. And we need to create a nice small ball exactly like we started with. And, there it's and therefore it's going to be ready to use next time we want it. 
it's very important to take the time to pack up correctly and to have and have a routine when you pack up so that when your equipment is uh, how you want to find it the next time you need it very very important don't just stuff it in any old way very important to be neat and methodical and set your equipment up properly and pack it down properly and look after it therefore it will serve you for a long long period of time well, I hope you've enjoyed this episode on how to set up an Australian Army Hoochie. If you like these videos, please share them and subscribe to the channel. Or you can go to our website www.bushcraftsurvivalaustralia.com.au You can see what courses we have coming up. We have a newsletter and a blog, so please feel free to subscribe to them. My name's Gordon Dedman and I look forward to seeing you again on the next episode of Bushcraft Survival.